All right, in this lesson, I wanna talk about gradients. Specifically, I've got a question from one of my students. His name's Polkit. Hey, I hope I said your name right. He asks, the thing he really wants to know is how to change the, uh, the opacity or vary the opacity across a rectangle made by rectangle in Photoshop. So the sample he sent in is this image here. So kind of like a lower third where you have a solid color and then it's fading to transparent. It's actually pretty straightforward and easy to do in Photoshop if you know where to look. So let me show you how. What we're gonna do is in Photoshop, go ahead and start by hitting the letter U to get the rectangle tool here. Now what I'm gonna do is just click and drag. So I've got my rectangle here and with it selected, in the options bar across the top, you see we've got the fill and the stroke, we can change the properties of this rectangle. If you don't see that, uh, let's say you're, you know, you've know, you been working on something else and you've got something else selected, go ahead and click on the rectangle you wanna change, and then you'll notice the options bar still doesn't change. So what we're gonna do now is hit the letter A, which is my uh, path tool or my direct selection tool over here, okay? So now I can click on that rectangle and you'll see we've got the options across the top that we can modify. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the fill. And I guess one thing I should point out too, you also have these properties on the right. If you don't see this properties window, just come up here to window and then down here to properties and you can kind of do it the same way. So like, like I've said in previous lessons, Photoshop has about a hundred ways to do the same thing. So uh, anyway, what I'm gonna do is click on this fill and up here at the top, we've got solid fill. Well, we've got the, the strike through means no fill, solid fill. We've got a gradient, and then this is a pattern fill. So if I click on this, there's all kinds of patterns we could drop in here, uh, but that's not what we're doing today. Let's jump back to the gradient here. So I'll click on that gradient, and now I've got all kinds of default gradients in here. If you don't see these, click on the little gear icon, and you can load custom gradients yourself here. What we wanna do is, with this selected, choose whatever color you wanna fade from. So in his case, he's using, uh, th this sample was kind of a light gray to transparent. So what I would do is come back here, come up to my fill, and my bottom swatches here, these are the color stops. And then up above, these uh, basically control where the slider's changing. So what I'm gonna do is change this bottom color to more of a gray color. Click OK, and this one we're gonna make go to uh, we're gonna make it go to transparent. So we can leave it as white, but if I wanted to, I could hold down the Alt key and drag a copy over so these are identical. I'm gonna click and drag to remove that or delete that color stop. Now we're basically going from gray to gray. So what we want to do now is click up here. This is our opacity stop. Right now it's set to 100% opacity, but I want it to be zero. So I'll hit zero and hit return, and it <laughs> I wasn't ready to close the box, so I'm gonna click back up over here. And you'll notice I keep adding stops on accident. If you just click right in here, it'll add a stop right above it. There we go. So it's really easy to add stops. I'm just gonna click and drag to remove it. If I click on these, you'll notice I've got a stop in between and I can adjust where or how far that gradient slides before it fades. So you'll notice it comes all the way up to here before it fades to transparent. So really flexible, easy to use. And then down here, we can change it from a linear gradient to radial or angle, reflected or diamond. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it as linear. I can click and drag to change the angle of my gradient. So in this case, in this sample, he's got it going from left to right, or right to left, whichever way you wanna look at it. I'm gonna come back, open that window again here. So now what I wanna do is make sure that this is actually set at zero. And now I should have a true left to right gradient. So that's pretty much it in, in Photoshop. Pretty straightforward. The other thing, if you wanted to change colors, just click down here or double click and you have your color picker box so you can click and drag and get whatever color you want or paste in your hex value. Or let's say you found something that you really liked and you wanted to replicate. In this case, um, you know I've got some samples here, it's really kind of crazy green. And what you could do, what I like to do if I find a color that I'm trying to sample, uh, what I used to do is I would take a screenshot, so I'm on a Mac, I'd hit Command, Shift, and the number four, and just click and drag from one color. Now before I let go, I'm gonna hold down the Control key, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna copy it to my clipboard. So now I've got my mouse still held down, I've got the Control key held down, and I'm gonna let go of my mouse. And now it copied it to my clipboard, I can jump back in here and hit Command V to paste it. And the only reason I did this was just to bring in the color sample, okay? Now I'm gonna come back to that and grab the lighter green, same thing, Command, Shift, and the number four. 
Now I'm not touching anything. I'm going to click and drag with my mouse. And before I let go of the mouse, I'm going to hold down the control key. All right. And now I'll come over here and hit command V to paste it. V is in Victor. All right. So now I've got a dark to a light. So what I'm going to do is click back on this gradient, come back to my fill, maybe. Ah, see, I got to make sure I'm on the right layer. So right now I'm on that sample layer that I just pasted. I'm going to come over here to my rectangle, click on it. Now I can select that fill. And I want to make the left side, let's make it that darker green. So I'm going to double click here. And now I can sample from that swatch I brought in. I'll click OK. I'll come back to this one. I'll double click. And I can sample the lighter swatch. Click OK. And now I'll go ahead and just move these two guys out of the way and delete those. What I just did there, I had, I, <laughs> sorry, sometimes I work so fast I forget uh, to slow down. So let me click on this guy here. And then I held down the command key so I could select two layers at once. I'll hit the delete key to delete them both. Perfect. Okay. So now I've got kind of like a lower third or something here. I could drop in a title, put her name, you know, whatever in this box. And that's pretty much it. Now let's take a quick look at some similar things in Illustrator. I've got Illustrator open. I've got my essentials workspace up here. I'm going to go ahead and hit reset essentials just to make sure you and I are looking at the same thing. And right here on the side, we've got this little gradient tab. So I'll click on that and you can add gradients to any shape you want. So I'm just going to start with the rectangle. Click and drag and now come over my gradient and I'll just click on that and it will apply it. Now by default, it'll probably be a black to white gradient, but I was obviously playing with something else. So I've got this crazy gradient here. Uh, but with the gradient selected, I can hit the gradient tool in my tools over here or just hit the letter G. And now I've got this gradient, uh, I don't even know what you call this, but I've got all these handles that I can modify what the gradient looks like in here. I can change the size, change the rotation. I can change where the anchor points or the color swatches uh, land. Or I can just click and drag to make a new one. Now, why would I ever use something like this? Well, let me show you some samples. Let's jump over here. Here's a sample that I pulled the color from just a second ago, and you can see they've got this uh, really beautiful background, really subtle, simple gradient, nothing fancy. Here's another option, uh, similar deal, just different color value, and you can see how it just adds a little bit of depth to your design. This one you can tell is kind of a radial gradient. We go from this um, darker color to this lighter color down here in a radial. Let me just, you know what, command shift and the number four, click and drag. Now before I let go of my mouse, hold down the control key. All right, I'm gonna paste this on my artboard so we can play with that. And then another sample uh, is this subtle blue, you know, lighter blue to darker blue. Just simple ways to make your design, um, you know, I know flat design is really popular right now, but you can do things like this to add just a little more depth to the things you're doing. So let's go ahead and uh, jump back over into Illustrator. And if I wanted to make this gradient match, what I would do, uh, I'll select my layer. I'll make sure I've got my gradient window open over here. I'm going to click on this little color swatch once. I'm going to hit the letter I as an eyedropper. Now, if I just click up in here, it's going to replace the whole thing with the solid color I just selected. That's not what I want to do. So I'm going to hit Command Z. I've got this rectangle selected. I'm going to select this color swatch. I've got my eyedropper tool. And instead, this time I'm going to hold down the Shift key and click once. Now it just sampled a color for that swatch only. Now what I want to do is get this lighter color. I'm going to click down here on the yellow, and again, my rectangle is still selected. I'm going to shift click down here. So now we've got the same, basically the same uh, gradient. Now you'll notice this one's a lot lighter for, for uh, um, you know, the gradient is a little more, oh man, I'm losing my words today. Sorry guys. Anyway, let's just, let me just show you how I would make it match better. So first thing, I want to make sure I'm on a radial gradient instead of a linear gradient. I'm going to hit the letter G to get my gradient tool. And I'm going to click and drag from this top corner and probably only down to about here. You can see it just kind of fades out right there on this guy. And you can see we've got something very similar. If I need to change the size, I can just click and drag on those anchor points and we're good to go. So that is how I'd make a gradient in Illustrator. All right, one thing I want to show you real quick to wrap this up is how to get smooth transitions with your gradients. So when you're working, especially in, in the CMYK color mode for print and sidetrack, go to File color mode and that's where you can 
know what you're working in or change it. Um, but if you're working with print and you want to make a smooth transition from one code to, the code to the next, if you're not careful, you can get what's called banding. So let me just draw a big old gradient here that goes from a black to kind of the slate gray color, bluish color. Um, and you see right here where the black kind of fades out, you get this, it's kind of banding we call it and it just it just doesn't fade well and it kind of goes light in the middle it's just kind of gross looking so how can we make that a smoother transition so what we want to do let me just go ahead and open up my gradient window and see what's going on if I double click on this black swatch you can see we have hundred percent black in theory that should be good right click on this uh, slate color and we've got a little bit of everything you know what's going on why is this looking good well the reason is anytime you have a color that, you know, in this case we have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, these are our sliders, and there's a little bit of every color represented. In the black, we only have 100% black. So what's happening is as it's transitioning into these other colors, there, these colors are transitioning from you know whatever value they were. So let's say you know 60% cyan, 40% magenta, and as they get closer to the black, they're fading out to zero. So they're essentially fading out to white. So you get this kind of gray muddy mess right here. So what we're going to do to fix that is actually add in some of these other colors. So if I add a little bit of cyan, you can see immediately how much that helped over here. Add a little bit of magenta, not too much. A little bit of yellow not a lot uh, you can see right away that this really helped that transition not be so muddy so this is kind of an extreme example and the gradient itself isn't you know that stellar per se but you can keep playing with it in this case if I add a little more cyan it really helps clean that up uh, again this is on the black uh, swatch we're working with on the left hand side here we can also adjust where this transitions or how far it comes into the image and that might help it a lot more as well so that's how you would help get a smooth transition one other thing I want to show you <laughs> side note if you're working with black let's just say this is hundred percent black what I do I use what's called a rich black so instead of having it zero 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 one hundred I actually give it sixty forty forty one hundred so we've got sixty percent cyan 40% magenta, 40% yellow, 100% black. And when that printer lays down all those inks, you're going to get a really rich, really dark uh, black that's going to look real sharp. So hopefully that helps you out, guys. And as always, feel free to reach out if you have questions. Thanks.